Algebra 2 CRAM, New York State Algebra 2 Regents, Common Core, Key Facts, Trigonometric Formula. Question 1, the sine of A plus B. If you're interested in ordering this complete review CRAM session, inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com and definitely inquire about other subject areas. Be sure to spread the words to your classmates and friends as well who need to cram or review Algebra 2. All right, let's delve into the problem. Review question one. If the sine of A is equivalent to four over five and the tangent of B is equivalent to five over 12 and angles A and B are in quadrant one, what is the value of the sine of A plus B? Is it going to be 1, 63 over 65, 2, 33 over 65, 3, negative 63 over 65, or 4, negative 33 over 65? I'll give you a moment to think. All right, so hopefully by now you are able to come up with a solution, and if not, that's completely fine. Let's see how this is done. So here we have a diagram of um, a ray that intersects the um, Cartesian coordinate plane at zero, and or the origin rather, and it forms an acute angle with the coordinate plane that we're calling theta. And if you recall, the sine of theta, or the sine, theta is just the variable of any angle, is going to be the y-coordinate divided by the absolute value of the measurement of the ray, or um, if you form this into a triangle, it would be the hypotenuse, okay? So it's important to know that the hypotenuse measurement or the ray measurement is always going to be positive, but what can make the sine or any other trigonometric function negative is the, um, the x or the y coordinate being measured, okay? So therefore, the sine of a comes from the fact that the y coordinate is four and the measurement of the ray is on um, five, okay? And likewise, uh, you would do the same for the cosine, uh, which is going to be x over r. And then you have your tan tangent of theta or tangent of whatever variable you choose. In our situation, we have the tangent of B, okay? So um, the five would be the measurement of uh, the Y value. And the 12 would uh, be the measurement of the X value. So definitely these are um, quadrant one angles because both values are positive, okay? All right, so um, the sine of A plus B can be found using the angle sum formula, okay? So that's what we're going to do. But before we do that, we're going to label our triangles so we can have a better visual of what we're doing, okay? So this is a rendition of um, triangle A, we're going to call it because we're dealing with an angle A. So we're going to input our information that's given. Again, the y value or y coordinate measurement is 4. So that makes um, this side 4. The extent of it goes to 4. And um, the extent of the measurement of the ray or the hypotenuse is 5. Okay. And we're trying to figure out the missing side, obviously, which um, it's easy because you should know the ratios of a 3, 4, 5 right triangle, okay? And that's what we have here. So you need to be able to recall concepts like that from Algebra 1 or previous years of math, okay? We could have also taken the long route and done the Pythagorean theorem, but if you know the ratio of triangles or, the, or some common ratios, not all, you'll be able to figure things like that really quickly, okay? 
So now we're going to do the same for um, triangle B. And we're going to input our known information. We know that the extent of the Y is 5. So this side of the triangle is going to be labeled 5. And um, the denominator is the X value. And we know that extent is 12. So that's going to be labeled 12 as well. And we're trying to figure out the missing side, okay? So for this, it's uh, we, we're not seeing a common ratio. So we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem, which says x squared plus y squared is equivalent to r squared. So or let's do that. Let's fill in our information. We have 12 squared plus 5 squared is equivalent to r squared. Um, and then we're going to have 169 when we combine 144, which is 12 squared, plus 25, which is y squared. Okay, we get 169 is equal to r squared. And this works out really nicely because we can take out uh, the square root of 169, which is going to be um, 13. Okay, so the missing side has a measurement of 13. All right. So um, what we're going to do now is take this information and substitute it into our angle sum formula. And um, just in case you forgot what the angle sum formula is, it's this. The sine of A plus B is equivalent to um, the sine of A times the cosine of B plus the cosine of a times the sine of b. And we do have all this information here now, and we can go ahead and fill in that formula. So basically, we get that um, the sine of a plus b is equal to 4 times 5, 4, I mean, 4, divided, 4 over 5, I'm sorry, times 12 over 13, plus 3 over 5 times 5 over 13, OK? And this is all going to be um, equivalent to 48 over 65 plus 15 over 65. Okay, when we uh, multiply each set, um, that's what we get. Now we can combine the numerators and we get um, that this is equivalent to 63 over 65. Okay, let's just take a breather before we um, go on to the next step. And we can clearly see here that the correct answer choice is going to be answer choice one, 63 over 65, okay? All right, but um, another cool thing is that you can use your calculator to solve this problem easily and accurately because we're told in the question stem that both angles are in quadrant one. If the angles were not in quadrant one, it would be a little trickier to solve. Not impossible, just a little bit trickier. There's more steps that you have to carry out regarding solving um, for trigonometric functions such as sine, tangent, secant, whatever, for angles that aren't in quadrant one, okay? But this uh, straight going to be straightforward because both angles are in quadrant one. Okay, so um, the thing that you want to do now is ensure that you're in degree mode. So when you press mode, this screen is going to pop up and you're going to get the cursor flickering over the normal. So the next thing that you're going to want to do is press the down arrow, then the cursor will be flickering over full. And the next thing you're going to want to do now is press the down key once more. And just as an aside, this information is for the TI-83, TI-84 series, okay? Or just the TI series in general. And if you have another make or model of calculator, the concepts will pretty much be the same. It's just that your buttons might be in a different location or they might have a different nomer. When I say nomer, I mean name. So now your cursor, again, is flickering over the radians. And let's just pretend that radian is highlighted instead of degrees, as shown here. What you would do is press the um, right arrow so that the cursor is over degrees. Now you're locked into degree mode. You don't need to press Enter um, in order to lock in the setting. All you need to do now is press Second Mode to quit the screen, OK? And so the next thing that you're going to do is input the inverse sine function to find the value of angle A. 
um, because that's what we're going to need in order to solve our problem. So, uh, and then we also want to store the value that we get as A, okay? So as shown here, you're going to input the inverse sine function. And then you're going to get um, the, you're going to, first you're going to press second sign, and this function comes preloaded with an open parentheses. So now you're going to type in four divided by five in order to represent um, the fraction four over five. And then you close out the parentheses, okay? And then you're going to hit stow, which is short for store. I don't have that on the screen, my bad, but you hit store. And actually, no, the enter shouldn't come just yet. So sorry about that. Ignore that enter. Uh, hit store. And then you're going to store it under A to make things easier, okay? So in order to get A, you would have to press alpha math because the um, the alpha A is uh, the, you know an alternative function of the math key, okay? So now what you're going to do is something similar. Uh, we're given the tangent of B. You're going to figure out what angle B is and store it as well, okay? So the enter that I have on screen should actually come after math and not before it, okay? So now you're going to hit second. Tan, which is short for tangent. That comes preloaded with an open parentheses. You're going to press five divided by um, 12 in order to represent the fraction 5 over 12. You're going to close out that parentheses, okay? And um, what you're going to do next is store this as um, B. Again, the enter's in the wrong location, so sorry. Uh, actually, no, the enter's in the right location. Then you hit stow. And it's going to store this as B, but you have to be the one to specify B. And B is hidden um, in alpha. And then you press the apps button, okay? And that will store the angle um, 22.6 as B, okay? All right, so now what we want to do is evaluate the sign of A plus B. So we hit sign, that comes again preloaded with an open parentheses, and then we're going to press alpha math to um, input A plus alpha apps. To input B, uh, we close out that parentheses, and then you hit enter. Okay, and then that answer is a sign of A plus B, but um, we're not given answers in decimal form, so what you want to do now is convert this into a fraction. And the way you're going to do that is simply by pressing second math to pull up, well, actually second answer, second negative sign, which is going to recall the previous answer of the sine of E plus B, which is 0.96 dot dot dot. You go ahead and you press math not second math, as I said previously, that's an error. And then um, you're going to press one because one is the option for converting whatever answer you have into a fraction, okay? And then press enter and you'll definitely, or sometimes the calculator doesn't function right away, but you should be able to easily get 63 over 65, which again is answer choice one, okay? All right. Thanks for your time. Be sure to spread the word. Thanks for being patient and good luck studying.